This is the Scientific Methods Worksheet number one, and we did this in class, but I thought it'd be good to put it on YouTube just so that if you did miss class, you could see it. But more importantly, if you're really confused, I could uh, go through it again so that you could take your time, you can stop it, pause it, you can try it on your own, and maybe that'll help you just a little bit. We have over on the right hand side, you can you notice that we have the data. And so where it says volume in cubic meters, that is our X data. So I'm going to go over to Logger Pro and go ahead and put my data in. This is 0.1 and then we'll move down and 0.5. Next one is 1. Next one is 4, 5, 8, and 10. So that's on the left side. The other thing that we can do is go ahead and double click the X. We can add the name volume on the uh, in the name and then for our units we're going to do meters cubed. So to do meters cubed we can add a superscript over to the right and that will make this a lot easier when you uh, when you do it at home. We didn't show you how to do this in class. This is something we're going to do on uh, the day we return, but I thought it'd be a good idea for you to see this. I'm going to go ahead and click done here. And then in the Y, you'll notice that the name for this one, the name or the label is pressure. So we're going to put pressure and then our unit is a Pascal. Typically, Pascals aren't written out as Pascals. Instead, they use PA. So we'll just use PA there. At this point, I need to put my numbers in for Pascals. And this one is 40. And then we have 8, 2, 1. We have 0.8. We have 0.5. And then we have 0.4. So when we look at our graph, I'm going to go ahead and make this big again. When we look at our graph, we notice that we do have a point up top. To see that point a little better, if you auto scale, sometimes it shows up. If it doesn't, the other thing you can do is zoom out. So now you can see that this shape is a hyperbola. I'm going to go ahead and auto scale it again. And because it's a hyperbola, we remember from before that any hyperbola that we have, the equation for a hyperbola, in order to make this graph a line, is y is equal to 1 over x. So we have to remember that we're going to use that y is equal to 1 over x in order to make this linear. At this point, I need to do a new column so that I can take all of the x values and automatically go ahead and take 1 and divide by each one of them. To do that, you can go to Data, go to New Calculated Column, and then we're going to call this Calculated Column 1 over, and I'm going to go ahead and write volume since that's what we're using. Down on the bottom, uh, oops, for this one, the units are going to be, uh, we're going to have to use uh, 1 over a meter, and then we'll go ahead and put that cubed in here. So our superscript is a 3, so 1 over a meter cubed. In order for this to calculate, we can go ahead and type in 1 divided by, but I can't put um, anything other than a variable in. So the variable that we want to put in here is uh, definitely volume. So I'm going to put volume in. Notice that it's in quotes. If you just type the word volume, it wouldn't work. At this point, we can click Done. And now we see we have 1 over each one of our values. In order to get back to the original values we had, we can just use the slider down on the bottom. We do notice that none of the, uh, the graph has really changed at all. So in order to change the graph, we're going to click on the volume. And notice that we can choose 1 over volume. And when I do that, I end up with um, something that looks like it could be a straight line. You might notice that there's four points here. There's another point here. There's also a point way up here in the corner. I'm not sure. Yeah, if we auto scale, you still don't see it. So you could actually minimize it a little bit and then you can start to see those points. There is one errant point here. Uh, that just happens whenever you take data. You're going to end up with a point that might not be on the line. Now we can go ahead and do a linear fit. So I've done a linear fit, and I end up with uh, the data that you see here. So if I want to write the full equation for this one, I'm going to write it using the y is equal to mx plus b. So we're going to ignore that what we see there. That was just to make the graph linear. And let's go ahead and let's write out the equation for this. And remember, whenever we have the standard form y 
is equal to mx plus b. We don't use y, we don't use x. Instead, we use our labels for each one of those. So we're going to do that on this one. y, instead of y, we're going to say pressure. So this is just pressure. No unit for this one, unless we have a number. So we're not doing numbers here is equal to, and we need our slope. So here it tells us our slope is 4.024, and then we're going to put the unit that they give us here, and it says it's a Pascal divided by 1 over a meter cubed. So let's think about that, a Pascal over 1 over a meter cubed. Anytime you see this, one of the things that we can do is simplify it. Let's go ahead and multiply both the top and the bottom by a meter cubed over one. So we'll do that for the bottom, and we'll also do that, I guess we should say numerator and denominator. Uh, we'll do it also here in the numerator. You'll notice that the meters cubed cross off, one over one is one, so this is a Pascal times a meter cubed. Don't let that really fool you, it's not, not too difficult. If you wanted to leave it as a Pascal over one, over a cubic meter, you sure could. No, uh, no penalty for doing that. So, so far we've done the Y, we've done the M. Now we need to put in what the X label is. And we see that our X label is down on the bottom. It's actually one over volume. I'm going to put that in parentheses to help set it out and set it apart. So this is one over volume. And then I need to look at my B value. And if you look at your B value, you'll notice that it is negative. So instead of positive here, we're going to put a minus sign. And then it's 0.3332. And then we will use PA since that is our unit. Remember, that's a Pascal. And that is how you linearize the first one. Um, the on the actual worksheet itself, and I'll pull it back over so you can kind of see, um, the sketch of the original graph, if you remember, was just a hyperbola. So we can just kind of do like this and make our hyperbola. The sketch of our test plot should always be aligned. Don't assume that. You want to try it first. If it doesn't work out, then you're going to try something else. But one thing that you might want to do is go ahead and you need to write your label there and your label here. That will help you with that mathematical expression. But the mathematical expression that you would need to write in that space is the mathematical expression that we just wrote up top here. So it's a little bit lengthy. That's why I use uh, the graph itself to write it on instead of writing it on the sheet. But right now your sheet would look like this. You would have this and then you would take your equation and you would have to uh, write that mathematical expression in number one. And that's how we do the first one.